A model steam engine test plant, part three. A serious problem with a piece of wood that I want to use as a mounting base. I removed the old varnish and it went downhill from there. I was given this large mounting plinth a while back. I can't remember where it came from. It was originally finished in some very thick varnish, professionally done, but it was badly damaged and scratched. Removing this old varnish was extremely difficult. It was really hard stuff and it didn't want to come off and clogged up the sander really quickly. In the end I cut up a piece of sanding belt, a four inch wide piece of sanding belt that I would normally use on my belt sander. This did remove the varnish but clogged up frequently and I got through a whole four inch belt sander belt before all the varnish was removed. I'm outside my workshop for this job and the piece of wood is resting on a very old Black & Decker workmate which is well past its best. The big problem was, as the sander clogged up, then it started unevenly scratching the surface as you can see here. I don't know what this varnish was that was originally on this piece of wood, but it was very hard indeed. And each time I changed the pad, after a very short time, it looked like this. I changed the sandpaper once again for a new piece and carried on. I will admit now before lots of people write in, I do not know much about wood. And at the moment, on the hormone tablets I'm taking for prostate cancer, I know even less about wood. Now for something completely different. I'm back in the workshop because I'm fed up of sanding the board. I'm going to paint the base. I was going to leave it in brass, but no, I will paint it black. A boiler clad in strip wood using brass boiler bands should look good when the bands terminate on a black base. I sanded, scoured and degreased this base to give a good key for the paint. Then I painted it using the excellent etching primer that I normally use. I did this yesterday and today it's time to paint the part using HMG satin black paint. Even though a lot of viewers won't want to listen to this, I would recommend that any man over the age of 40 gets a PSA test. I'm 71. I also have type 2 diabetes and one of the regular blood tests showed an elevated PSA level. Further PSA tests over a period showed a higher PSA level. Just in case you're wondering what PSA stands for, it stands for prostate specific antigen. And it's a very good way to test to see if there's a malfunction. My PSA level ended up at 7.62, which is too high. Two years ago, I had a biopsy which showed the cancer. And two years later, I've had another biopsy which still shows the cancer. By the way, this clip clearly shows that I'm using HMG paints, black satin. I've just bought 12 cans of this because it's such good stuff to have in the workshop. I use it on almost everything. It's not cheap, but good quality things seldom are. So here's the plan with my prostate cancer. I have to be on a drug called bicalutamide for six months. And in between that, at the end of May, I will have five sessions of radiotherapy and then I'll see what happens. The bicalutamide drug drops my testosterone and this is causing me problems. It's not good for the cancer and it's not good for my brain which has been severely affected by it. I narrate these videos on a daily basis without a script but it makes no difference if I write it down I still manage to say it wrong. This drug is affecting my very short term memory. I don't like taking it but I don't have much choice. Anyway back to the job. Finally, I removed what I thought was most of the varnish. And now I'm going to apply some of this Ron Seal Hard Glaze Clear Varnish. I'm going to show a clip from my How to Build a Model Steam Launch video series. I made this quite a few years ago. And it shows what I'm capable of with a paintbrush and some pieces of mahogany. This was the first video series that I made, and I didn't make it for YouTube. I used to sell it as a DVD set. I don't sell it anymore, but you can see it if you become a member of my YouTube channel or join Patreon. This series shows the building of a quality steam launch from start to finish and contains five hours of video instructions. I recorded all of the audio using the microphone in the iMac that I use for editing. 
and as you can hear, the current audio is far better quality than it was 12 years ago. This varnish which I use is called Ron Seal Hard Glaze. It is a polyurethane type of varnish. However, I don't use the water-based version of this varnish. This is the traditional type of varnish. It's been around for years and you will need to use white spirit for cleaning your brush after using this varnish. A quick note on thinning the varnish. With a new tin of varnish, I tend to use it just as it comes out of the tin. But as the varnish level drops in the tin, the varnish tends to get a bit thick and treacly. When it gets like this, it's time to thin it slightly. Paint and varnish manufacturers recommend special polyurethane thinners, but I tend to use white spirit, which I find works fine. And the final coat of varnish will be thinned at least 50-50. If you do make a mess of the varnishing and you're not happy with it, you can either sand it off with the sander or remove it with cellulose thinners. You can use cellulose thinners on a cloth to remove the varnish, but this will initially make a real sticky mess. But by constantly changing the cellulose thinners, you will eventually remove all of the varnish and get back to the bare mahogany. All I have to do now is duplicate what you've just seen in the video clip on this piece of wood. I'm assuming that this is mahogany, but when I was sanding it, I didn't get the familiar peppery sort of smell coming off it. But as I mentioned at the beginning of this video, I am no expert on wood. I'm trying to give the board an even coat, and to start with it seemed to be okay, but then I ran into trouble. Certain areas were not actually covering very well, and the surface was patchy with parts that looked like they were dry. The state of the paint is nothing to do with the speed at which I'm painting. The video itself is running at 400%. After painting the board with the varnish, I couldn't do any more in the workshop, so I came back the next day, and when I looked at it, it was horrible. Can you see the dry, non-glossy areas? I think this is a reaction with what's left of the varnish that must have soaked into the grain of the wood. I tried rubbing down the board with some wet or dry sandpaper. This didn't improve matters. The top part is fairly dry. It's not fully hardened, but it's dry enough to rub down. But around the edges, where I'd gone over the existing varnish, the entire edge surface was sticky. There's definitely something wrong here. And I really can't live with it. I know it's only a boiler test plant, but that is not important. So it's time to apply some standard thinners, which is also known as lacquer thinner in the USA, to remove the varnish. After a generous application of the cellulose thinners, I was able to scrape the varnish off the top and the sides of the board. The only thing that I can think is happening is a reaction between the original varnish and the current varnish. So after scraping off as much as I could, it was back outside onto the Black & Decker workmate to finish the job off. With the sander at this speed sounding like a demented bumblebee, I rubbed down the top yet again. And I also rounded the edges. I didn't like them square as they were. Although it's not as bad as it previously was, the sandpaper is still picking up very badly. I changed it for a new piece and off we go again. This took a long time. But eventually, the sander stopped clogging up, so I assume I must have got through the varnish layer. And now it would appear that I'm actually sanding just the wood, because the sandpaper is staying clean. Well, clean-ish, not perfectly clean. I took the plinth back into the workshop and gave it a really good rub down with some finer grit emery cloth. When I'm planking baseboards or boat hulls, I don't normally do this, because by having particles in the varnish, as I initially coat the wood, the particles are swept into the gaps between the planks. But in this case, I used the finer grade sandpaper followed by some Scotch-Brite substitute, which is a bit feeble. And then, instead of using a paintbrush, I used a folded rag. This is a similar principle that I've seen used for applying wax to furniture, but I don't want to wax this part I want to have polyurethane in there, that way it will be durable and waterproof. After applying the unthinned polyurethane varnish to the wood, I added a small amount of white spirit to the cloth and went over it again, and now it's looking just how I want it to look. 
and the next day, here's a board with the boiler base in place. I'd never wanted the board to look very glossy and highly varnished. This finish is just what I want. And that's it for this episode. I know it's been a bit long-winded. Believe me, it took ages. But now, as usual, I say to all my viewers, stay safe, stay healthy, thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Mainstream Models website and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that, you can find other videos that you may like to watch. And by using the playlists, you can actually watch the videos back to back.